So Ringo's life had changed. No shit. Who's hadn't? And if your life doesn't change in the course of a decade, there must surely be some loss growing. I had settled down significantly in, significantly in the last 10 years, and the changes had been good. Although I'd never married, I did have the best guy friend, Simon. Sure, I had pushed for a permanent relationship, including a ring, but Simon just couldn't get there. He did, we did, however, go Dutch treat on a cement mixer, and that's about as committed as I could get. <laughs> I had long given up on the wedding bells. And furthermore, Ringo's grandchild, just for the record, is his wife's daughter's baby. Not even blood related. His, his life had changed. What about mine? If Ringo could claim he was a grandfather, I could say I was a mother. In fact, talk about change and responsibility. I had become the legal guardian of a teenage girl just one year before. I had gone from zero to 15 with the stroke of a pen. <laughs> Granted, I was still in the process of getting to know Soraya and hoping I would do a better job than her former guardian, who was currently awaiting federal charges on fe waiting trial on federal charges. But Soraya would be well cared for in my absence, I justified. In fact, the more I thought about it, the more comfortable I was about sh shirking this particular responsibility. As I flipped through the cards, it soon became clear that most of the guys I would like to have fishing with me could not pass muster in any background check. One <laughs> consequence of not keeping your nose clean that there are chances that you'll not be eligible for. These guys didn't deserve the opportunity, I decided. I should just, um, okay, I, I'm going to continue reading, but before I do the background check, um, this trip that I write about is one featured on Discovery Channel last summer. And there was a background check for all the crew members. Most of mine didn't pass. <laughs> I sent in, you know, I sent to original productions a list of names and social security numbers, and I get a call, send more names. None of these guys are going on the show. So, we continue. <laughs> As I flip through the card, oh yeah, I already got that part. My second choice after Ringo would be Kenny Puddister, the red-headed newfie I had worked with for four years. Kenny would probably be fishing with Scotty aboard the Eagle Eye, too. It wouldn't be very ethical of me to try to steal him. Besides, if I were Kenny and I had, had to choose between the two captains, me or Scotty, I'd go with Scotty, too. There's no point in putting myself through that humiliation. I had absolutely no way of getting in touch with choice number three, Carl. He owed me some money, so there was little chance he'd surface if I put feelers out. <laughs> James was in Ireland. I hadn't heard from Ivan in years. I hesitated on a card on which I had written, Moron. <laughs> the moron would be available, but I just couldn't do it. I had signed on to spend 60 days, a minimum of a thousand miles from home, bobbing around the North Atlantic Ocean during the height of hurricane season in pursuit of swordfish. I would be living and working in less than optimum conditions, very closely with four men. In the past, I had not mind working with men who behaved like animals, or morons for that matter. They got the job done. I had always hired from the neck down. But at the age of 47, I realized that I had changed, and perhaps my criteria for crew needed to change, too. I took a break from the Rolodex to check email and was happy to find a note from Jim Buddy. Jim must have some innate sense about things, I marveled, as I read his email. He had, a, he had sent a list of potential crew members with short bios and contact information. He listed five guys, all of whom had experience fishing on the boats he managed that constitute the iFleet, and all of whom he recently contacted regarding work. The names, except for one, Mike Machado, were unfamiliar to me. The first bio read like a personal ad, with details about eye color and zodiac sign. <laughs> no thanks. I'm all set, I thought. The second sounded like a backwoods Rambo type of guy. No, I fished with the likes of them, not this time. The third one, Jim referred to as the Silver Fox, and noted that he'd been sober for two weeks. <laughs> the fox out of rehab and straight for three months. I'm not taking him offshore either. <laughs> possibility, num possibility number four was Mr. Weeks. Would I have to call him Mr.? <laughs> Too weird for me. The additional comment that Mr. Weeks had actually captained the Seahawk for a short while and might need an occasional reminder that he was no longer in charge <laughs> sealed his fate. One boat plus two captains equals nightmare. This was beginning to resemble audition week for American Idol. <laughs> it's one thing to accept opportunity and quite another to capitalize on it. The right crew would be essential in maximizing this opportunity. So I ended up with a totally made-for-TV crew. Um, with the exception of Mike Machado, none of them had any uh, sword fishing experience whatsoever. No one ever been to Grand Banks. Um, but a really 
nice group of men that I didn't mind working very closely with and living like animal with. Um, and as it turned out, because this trip that I write about was my 56-day epic disaster, if I'd had very experienced guys who knew that really wasn't the way things were supposed to go, um, they probably would have mutinied and never would have been able to finish the trip. Um, so really glad uh, to have that. I hope you have questions for me. I'll just say one more thing about my crew, and that is um, the four men that I talk about in this book um, were just really wonderful guys. Um, I was arrested, and you can read about that in the book. <laughs>